Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Haven't seen you for a while. Oh, I've still got my limiter on. I'm still on 30 miles an hour. I thought I was getting to work slowly. So, what a lovely day in paradise. Low white cloud, good night for photography. And uh, on my way to work again. Wednesday today, very busy day yesterday. Quieter today. Surge is still quiet. So, um, we're looking at ways to sort of drum up a bit more business. Our biggest problem is we're off the beaten track. We're in, a, in, a, in an innovation center. And so we've absolutely no footfall. And by the time everybody who's a patient is, has been cured and you know had all the grounds and bridges that they need and told all their friends, <coughs> then um, we don't, uh, I think uh, acquiring new patients is our lifeblood, you know, our, our oxygen. And uh, what we've done is we've uh, probably neglected that a bit. You know, I hadn't really, I, uh, you know, being a bit old school, I sort of tend to rely more on things like Google uh, word of mouth recommendation and stuff like that and really that's been good enough that and a uh, well, it used to be a yellow pages advert did there and uh, but that was more to validate the practice it wasn't that people would sort of come to see you because of a yellow pages advert what, had, what would happen was people would say oh go and see old uh, angry he's a good dentist and they would just look look you up in the yellow pages to try and find you and if you were in there, then you were kosher. And if you weren't, then they wanted to know who the hell you were. So, let me get my wing mirrors in, because these nutters. When you drive down country lanes a lot, you know, you you realise that there are, there are people who also drive down country lanes a lot, and you get past them without any trouble at all, and then you get, then you get the people who are perhaps in their partner's car, or they're in a big car and they don't really know how wide it is or they're not used to driving down country lanes and they just basically they drive a foot or two further over than they should do you know you should be really if you haven't got any grass on your wing mirror on the left by the time you get to work then you're driving too far into the middle and then of course there's the other thing is you, you always meet the occasional bus or lorry or something coming down here so usually around the corner you know give you a nice surprise Test out the reactions, your emergency stop. So we're thinking about ways to uh, boost traffic and obviously the way that, you know, the, the first word that springs into everybody's mind when you talk about uh, marketing and, and recruitment, you know, and uh, getting more patients is um, advertising. Oh, you should advertise. And believe me, I have tried every single type of advert. Every, I've tried everything. I've tried uh having a stall at the local uh shopping center giving away free toothbrushes i've uh tried a uh, helium balloon uh release in liaison with the local paper and uh where we put the uh, business cards attached to helium balloons and let them off all over the place oh yeah there's nothing we haven't tried leaflet drops you name it and i've got to tell you none of it works none of it works the uh, the only things that do work are you know quite unobtrusive small adverts that are perhaps appear in a local paper on a, on a, on a long over a long term you know but that's quite difficult to sort of stomach the fact that you might have to pay 100 150 pounds a week every week for a year uh, for an advert before it starts to work you know it's quite that's quite tricky anyway what we're doing because we are sort of pioneering and we're at the forefront of various types of practice development so i'm thinking are there any other uh ways that things are done which we could disintermediate you know which we could sort of uh ready for a, for a step paradigm step forwards uh, and remember we did dentures in a day so we do dentures in a day because dentures don't need to take uh four weeks or six weeks or whatever so that was one thing. Then we've the uh, second thing, most recent thing was the reception free practice. Because we realized that receptionists are, you know, they used to maintain these massive great ledgers of patients and nobody really knew. If someone said, when's my next appointment? Only the receptionist would know that. And uh, recall letters have been replaced with recall emails and uh, people don't 
ring in anymore much. They they email in, you know, and expect a quick reply to their email because their email's on their phone now. It's not even like the old days when their email was on their PC and they used to pick it up once or twice a day if they weren't if they didn't have email at work. But you know, the only time they would do quick email was was if they were at work and they had it on their work PC and then even then they didn't expect. It was like one day they would email you, the next day you would email them. That's because they would give you a chance to come over in the evening, pick up the email and reply to it. Now it's all on the mobile phone. So it's like, I've emailed you, why, why you've got, obviously you got the email, why haven't you emailed me back, you know? And you get a, a plethora of these uh, emails saying, did you get my last email? <laughs> Yes, because if I hadn't, you would have got a message saying this couldn't be delivered. It was obviously delivered, you know. So, receptionist free practice. Now I'm thinking I'm casting my, my casting my mind around and think what else, what else, what else would we do? And we've decided to have a serious look at implants. And again, implants is something that hasn't really changed since you know Brandon Mark invented them. Basically, they're slow, expensive, and and supposedly difficult and yet when i say to people uh, it's as easy to put in an implant as it is to screw a rule plug in a wall um i am honestly i honestly believe that i do honestly believe that putting an implant in is one of the easiest jobs i would probably rather put an implant in than do an mod restoration or, or a crown or you know etc etc it should be so easy to put implants in. They are so advanced these days. They're so biocompatible that the uh, the uh, morphology of the implants is so well understood. They're so well packaged. The uh, we understand the, the the speed, the whole preparation, the saline drip. It's all integrated now into these single unit uh, drills, implant drills. The costs have come down. You can get an implant drill for a couple of grand now. Whereas. I, I don't know whether you know how much they used to cost but the point is that it's they're not that is not you know out of the reach of any dentist now just to get an implant drill and then to set up to buy 15 implants 15 healing caps and get a cup get get the prosthetic kit and the placement kit thrown in is another two grand so you're looking at four grand to set up yeah and you can probably, if you sort of uh, start advertising implants and you get two or three people who want implants to pay you up front, then really that's your upfront costs all covered, isn't it? Uh, so, so the way the thinking is going, we've looked at the implant costs and again, you know, you might think, oh, well, I mean, okay, let's start from the beginning. What is the current situation? The current situation is that uh, implants are costing around 1400 1500 pounds 1200 14 1500 pounds something like that and then you've got the crown on top so really you're not going to get much change out of 2000 quid this is per per implant per crown uh, implant supported crown and people ring up and say how much is an implant and we used to say oh well, it's about 1400 quid and then but then you've got your crown on top of that so they say well why did why did you say 1400 quid why don't you just say 2000 you know because who wants an implant without a crown? You know, what, who's, what idiot's going to ring up and say, oh, I just like the implant, really. Uh, don't worry about the crown on the top. Just give me the implant. Thanks very much. You know, and these people get quite annoyed and aerated about the way that we do it, even though, you know, I try and explain it is modular and you might not have a crown and you might have a bridge or it might, might support your denture or something like that. So anyway, there we go. So we've got 1,400 plus about 600, so 2,000. Now, Looking at the costs, okay? Now, let's just say for the sake of argument that you've got some free appointments. If you're up, if you're booked up till, if you're booked up three months ahead, then this probably won't be of quite so much interest to you. But um, let's assume that you've got some time to place implants. And let's assume that they don't take too long. Because again, that's the, the other, the implant woo is that the whole thing is, He's dressed up, isn't it? Like something out of Dr. Kildare. And you drape everything, including the walls, and the whole thing, you have to shut the surgery for the morning, etc., etc. So let's just take that, let's just get rid of that presupposition, okay? For, you know, because we're, we're, we're thinking out of the box here, okay? This is, this is blue sky thinking here. We're running ideas up the flagpole to see if they flap, okay? 
So, so let's just look at the cost. Your, your cost for your implant, let's say 15 implants and healing caps, uh, 150 quid each, um, tops. And then uh, you've got 15 crowns, let's say 100 tops, probably near a 60, but, but 100 tops, uh, including abutments. So you're looking at about 250 uh, in basic uh, direct costs, you know, for a crown. And then you've got uh, the surgery time and the dentist time on top of that. So you've got some indirect, but let's supposing that uh, your surgery is not 100% utilised. And, and whose surgery is 100% utilised? Who, who doesn't have some spare time? Or even if they don't have some spare time, who doesn't have a spare chair? You know, so let's assume that you're, you, that you're, you, there's an opportunity of cost associated with having a, nobody in the practice. So you're losing money because your chair's empty and you can't sell an appointment for yesterday. So let's just for one side, just put aside the, the issue of what the dentist is going to get paid to do the work and, uh, and, uh, and, the, and the cost of the staff and stuff like that. Okay, just to make things easier. So there you are, you're looking at, what did I say, about 150 for the implant and about 100 for the crown. So 250 and we're charging 2,000. Right, I'll just say that again and get the math. So 250 costs, and we're charging 2,000. Right, and this is why people want to do implants because it's the profit margin on them is eight times. So you're. This is why you, your guy who's an implant. This is why I got a patient yesterday, who said. We've got. He said I've got a failed post crown. And. Uh, the dentist says he can't do anything with it, so I'm going to need to have an implant. And we have successfully done bridges on people who had been told that they, they only, their only option was an implant, you know. And we have successfully done replaced post crowns on crowns where the patient was told that it was beyond repair and the only thing that they could have was an implant. And when you consider that the profit on each implant is 1750 compared to the profit on a crown or the profit on an extraction and a plastic denture, whatever, 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 you can see why, why to a hammer everything looks like a nail, can't you? To an implantologist, everything looks like it needs an implant. So where's the opportunity, right? Where's the arbitrage in this? Where can we, where can we come in and disintermediate? What we're going to be doing is we're going to be disintermediating the uh, the implantologists, the existing implantologists. And I think, and I've got this from uh, when I went abroad, we was looking at marketing, you know, you pick up dentist leaflets and stuff. They like over, over in, uh, you know, Spain, Italy, that they, they leave them everywhere, leave them in public toilets. They leave their leaflets everywhere. And one of these leaflets said, uh, crown, Todo inclusivo, right? That means everything included, in case you're wondering. Todo inclusivo, 999 euros. And I am, you know, your first, your initial response to that is my, what my response was to, uh, years and years and years ago to this guy called Ed Silker who came over and said that you could gross a million dollars single-handed in his book the million dollar solo dental practice and my reaction initial reaction and everybody's subsequent reaction was the work he does must be crap to turn over i mean this is a time when we were trying to turn over forty thousand quid a year and he was turning over a million dollars i mean you know probably you know even for the, allowing for the dollar pound conversion rate you can see that there was an order of magnitude difference in terms of earnings so when you look at a Spanish leaflet that offers an implant and crown complete for 999 euros, your first thought, of course, is that must be complete crap. My God, what, what, what are they doing? What are they using? What are they doing? Are they doing the old NHS trick of putting paper clips in, in, uh, in, in crowns, you know, instead of posts and cords using paper clips or, or or uh, uh, those bloody dentators, what are they called? The screw things, the, 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 the copperized screws. 
you know what are they doing but when you look at the actual cost of 250 pounds for an for a implant supported crown you can see how it can be done can't you you can see how it can be done and let's say for the sake of argument that we advertise these things for 999 pounds 900 not you know euros pounds then oh well, bloody euros is about the same as a pound isn't it then then that's going to revolutionize implants isn't it now now you're going to say oh yeah 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 all right what's here the first one you're going to get is going to be some bloody difficult 90 year old with a you know sinus is down is 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 open into their their maxilla is open into their mouth and blah 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 and well it's going to be an upper central uh an upper central where you know they're very 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 conscious about appearance and stuff like that to which my answer will be no those i am not going to do i'm not proposing that those could or should be done for 999 quid i'm talking about the the premolars the just the missing back teeth the missing lower teeth the missing lower front teeth you know the ones the one the rule plugs what i call the rule plugs <laughs> The ones where you can get the patient in and and just and get them numb and make a sterile hole and screw a rule plug in, you know? And then say, right, off you go. Then and I know this is gonna run up against a lot of resistance because I went to an LDC conference once and they were talking about this is when they were talking about extending the um length of the dental syllabus from five years to five years plus you know five years in a term or was it five years in a term plus vocational training or something and uh, someone stood up and said look you know this is getting ridiculous you know you, you academics you're getting out of hand you're uh, yeah 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 you shouldn't drive if you're half blind so you know this this these terms are getting too long and 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 because it was a conference of you know because there's a lot of academics there at the LDC conference and they're all they're all dead for this because it's empire building isn't it and they, and someone from the academic side said well look you know if you're going to tell us to cut down on the syllabus on, on the syllabus length you've got to tell us what you can take out of the syllabus <clears throat> you know tell us what tell us what dentists don't need to know you know got I challenge you do they what do we take out do we take out crowns do we take out bridges do we take out the study of aardvark teeth? Yeah, yeah, but you know, and and they th and he thought that was an end to the end to the argument. But then I stood up and I said, look, my daughter's uh, in flight training at the moment, and I said she's got she doesn't have the academic qualifications to get into university into dental school. I said, but in in nine months' time, she'll be able to fly as a co-pilot on a seven thirty-seven. So and you're telling me that a co that a co-pilot on a 737 has any less responsibility or a job that's in any way easier than a dentist and oh boy did they not like that I mean did they not like that you know I saying why why effectively I was saying why do you take five years to do something that everyone else does in nine months and this is the this is what the implantologists are going to say they're going to say no 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 Go, gowns gowns sterile packs drapes you know, and yet when you do a surgical extraction, you don't drape up. And I tell you, there's more chance of, of causing problems with the infection with a, a difficult surgical extraction where you have to raise a flat, remove bone, divide the roots, elevate the roots, etc., etc. Uh, I'd say there's at least as much chance of a surgical uh, infection complication with that sort of job as there is, well, there is just sticking in a wall plug. That probably takes five minutes and doesn't involve any trauma any bleeding uh you know or any <laughs> or any sort of digging about <laughs> so this is if people, this is why people don't like me you know i can see why they don't like me because i do tend to sort of you know pull the rug away from the established interests anyway so that's my latest idea the 999 pound fully inclusive implant which takes away the fear of cost as well you see because the patient's not the patient's not uh, worried about cost because they're not saying, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, but you haven't added in that, have you? And I say, yeah, I have. I've added everything. That's everything. 
I don't, you don't have to worry about whether or not there's, you know, you don't, I don't tell you that there's an implant and then there's a crown. Oh, but by the way, there's an abutment. You've got to pay an extra for an abutment. Oh, by the way, oh, yeah. And then, of course, there's extra for the stent. And then there's extra for the first implant because we have to have a drape kit. You know, this is it. Fully inclusive. Fully inclusive. Don't pay anything more. You, you, you uh, come in, you get your implant. Three months later, you get your crown. 999, fully inclusive. And... Uh, going to cost me about 250 quid to do it so we'll see we'll see how it goes i'll let you know i'll keep you up to date don't you do it don't you nick my idea all right okay see you soon bye